today's topic is index. Index is basically a numerical value. So what that numerical value do is that in order to facilitate the comparison in the form of a number, we need a number, right? So that we need to tabulate, we need to compare, we need to assess. So basically, it is the clinical observation in the form of a numerical value. So what the index does is that uh, we need to have a number, right? Like suppose if you want to compare the weight of two individuals, you would say that a person is 50 kgs and the other one is 55 kgs. So here the unit for comparison in the number form is in kilograms. So this is the purpose of an index. So what the index does is that specially it is useful in order to know the status of a population and it is very useful in case of a preventive program. Suppose for dental caries, if a person uh, has been given a toothpaste, so first the index would be taken, then the toothpaste would be given and then after a while, the test would be done that how effective the toothpaste was. So this is the purpose of the index. So basically, index is used so that you can compare it with the pre-existing value or to tabulate or to come to a conclusion and to know in the, the, uh, uh, the clinical observation in the form of a proper numerical value. Also, it can be used where the disease progression has to be compared, a comparison has to be made. Even in that case, a number is needed. That is a number basically. Okay, so the clinical observation in the form of a number. So coming to the definition of the index, we will um, break it down in points so that we can understand it. It is a numerical value. describing the relative status of a population on a graduated scale with definite upper and lower limits which is designed to permit and facilitate comparison with other populations classified by the same criteria and methods. This definition was given by Russell. Okay. So basically, what do we understand by indexes that it is a numerical value okay it is a number okay which is describing it is describing the status of a population the relative status and there is a scale the scale has an upper limit the scale has a lower limit what is the purpose which is designed so that you can facilitate the comparison okay to facilitate the comparison of the other population but why the classification method has to be same. So this is the definition which was given by Russell and this is what we understand by an index. So basically how an index should be. So coming to the ideal requisites of an index, it can be studied with a common mean which is crevas, a common mnemonic, sorry. So basically these are the ideal requisites of an index. The first one is clarity, simplicity and objectivity. What we understand by clarity is that it should be such that the rules can be easily carried in a person's head. Okay, so with clarity what happens is that the examiner can easily remember 
carry those rules in its head and can easily be applied. Simplicity is that it can be simple to understand, easy to apply, no undue time is lost, it can be applied easily. Objectivity means that the criteria should be objective. Okay. Now, validity is something which has been asked earlier as an MCQ. So, what we understand by validity? Validity means that it should measure what it is intended to measure. Suppose we are studying DMFT. So, it is measuring dental caries. Okay, suppose we are studying gingivitis. So, it, it is measure, measuring a gingival disease. All right. And the other definition of validity is that it should correspond with the clinical stages of a disease. Okay, if we if uh, this patient has stage 2 gingivitis, so it should correspond with the clinical stage of the disease. All right. And suppose now if you see DMFT index. So, what happens in DMFT indexes? Here, the M component means missing due to caries. All right. But what can happen is that after 30 years of age, the tooth could be missing due to reasons other than caries, due to old age. So, here we would not say that DMFT is a valid index. Okay. Now, what do we understand by the next trait, which is reliability? Rel the other word for reliability is reproducibility. So, what we understand by reliability is that if the same person is measuring at different time intervals, even then the results should be reliable. That is known as intra-examiner reliability. If one person is, if different examiners are measuring at the same time, so that is known as inter-examiner reliability. So now the other word for reliability is that the results should be reproducible. Okay. Now coming to quantifiability. Quantifiability means that it should be amenable to statistical analysis. Whatever results that you do, the, the uh, it should be kept in a numerical, it should be able to be tabulated, it should be kept in a numerical form and then it should be quantifiable. It can be easily analyzed. This is what we understand by quantifiability. Okay. Now coming to sensitivity. By sensitivity, we mean that it should be able to detect small shifts. Okay. Small shifts. So, by sensitivity, we mean is that even if the small shift is there in a clinical stage of a disease, that is, we understand that it should be able to detect the small shifts. Now, what happens in a simplified indices, for example, OHIES. Now, what happens in these indexes that suppose 1.6 has lesser deposits as compared to 1.7 or 1.7 has more deposits. In that case, we will overestimate so, in simplified indices, simplified indices as we will be seeing is that where we take a particular segment. So, we there is always a tendency to either overestimate the disease or to underestimate the disease. In these cases, the sensitivity will be compromised. Okay, so those indices, we would not consider them as sensitivity. Okay, now coming to acceptability. What we understand by acceptability is that basically it should not be painful or demeaning to the patient. This is when we say that an index is acceptable. So these are the ideal requisites of an index. Okay, so coming to the classification, the indices are classified based on the different categories. First is direction based on the direction in which the scores can fluctuate. So, what do we understand by direction is there are two types of indices. One is reversible. By reversible, we, we mean that the scores can be reversed. Okay. So, it can be reversed in which conditions? The conditions which can be reversed. For example, gingivitis can be reversed. Okay. If you uh, do the proper uh, oral profile axis, the, um, the gingival scores might come down. If the curettage is done, the periodontal status can be revived. Not completely, but yes. So, those are... The, here, the indices such as o, OHI is simplified, OHI, the, which, which measure the plaque, the plaque can be reduced on oral profile axis and the gingival index. So, those are reversible indices. Okay. The other category is irreversible. As we know, dental caries is an irreversible microbiological disease. So, the disease which cannot be reversed. 
if the tooth has already decayed the cavitation has occurred in that case the scores cannot be reduced so those diseases would be called uh, those indices would be irreversible indices okay so this is what we understand by irreversible okay now the second category is extent to which the areas first is direction in which the scores can fluctuate the second is the areas of the oral cavity so there are two categories in this full mouth and simplified so for example when we'll be reading about ohi ohi was covering all the teeth in the oral cavity then a lot of time was lost in covering each and every tooth so then they came up with the simplified version what they did in the simplified version is they took a representative tooth the uh, all the teeth were divided into various segments okay so based on the area there are two categories one is full mouth which measure the entire mouth the examples of which are russell's periodontal index ohi cpi modified gingival index and plaque index the simplified is oral hygiene index simplified and php uh, patient hygiene performance in this the representative teeth are used which is 161126363131 and 46 coming to the third category of classification is according to the entity they measure okay so the entity by entity we mean that if the index is measuring the disease part so here the d part of the dmft is measuring the dk okay if the index is measuring the symptom suppose if the index is measuring the bleeding which is a symptom of the gingival disease that would be the symptom treatment is in the dmft the f component stands for filled due to caries so here we are evaluating the treatment part so according to the entity they measure would be the uh that would be the third category the fourth category would be based on the special categories here what we understand is simple simple means whether we'll measure a disease is present or not present okay cumulative means all the evidence of a disease is measured for example dmft dmft means that d component means the currently the cavitation is there m component means the caries was there and now the tooth is missing due to caries f component means that the caries was there and now it is filled due to caries so here this is what we understand by cumulative simple means that all the teeth except the all the indices except dmft are an example of D, uh, of uh, simple index and cumulative dmft is a classic example so here we end the classification of index